সুপ্রিয় চিকিৎসক বৃন্দ সবাইকে আজকের সিরিজ লেকচার প্রোগ্রাম অন ল্যারিঙ্গোলজির স্বাগত আমাদের আজকের টপিক ফোনো সার্জারি আয়োজনে ল্যারিঙ্গোলজি অ্যান্ড ভয়েস অ্যাসোসিয়েশন অফ বাংলাদেশ লাইফ পার্টনার আমরা বিটি ফিজিশিয়ান্স আজকের সায়েন্টিফিক পার্টনার হেলথ কেয়ার ফার্মাসিউটিক্যালস এবং আজকে কুইজের বুক অ্যান্ড গিফট পার্টনার ফিরোটিল প্লাস আমরা সবাইকে আবারও স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আজকের সেশনে আমরা অত্যন্ত লাকি যে আমাদের সাথে আজকে ইএনটির বাংলাদেশের তিনজন দিকপাল একসাথে জয়েন করেছেন আমাদের মাঝে আজকে স্পিকার হিসেবে জয়েন করেছেন বাংলাদেশের অত্যন্ত খ্যাতনামা একজন ইএনটি স্পেশালিস্ট প্রফেসর কামরুল হাসান তরফদার স্যার প্রেসিডেন্ট সার্ক ইএনটি সোসাইটি প্রেসিডেন্ট ল্যারিঙ্গোলজি অ্যান্ড ভয়েস অ্যাসোসিয়েশন অফ বাংলাদেশ এক্স চেয়ারম্যান ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ ইএনটি অ্যান্ড হেড এন্ড নেক সার্জারি বিএসএমএম এক্স প্রেসিডেন্ট ইএনটি সোসাইটি বাংলাদেশ অ্যান্ড কারেন্টলি কারেন্টলি স্যার ইজ ওয়ার্কিং ইন বিএসএমএম অ্যাজ প্রফেসর অফ ইএনটি অ্যান্ড হেড হেড নেক সার্জারি আমাদের সাথে আজকে প্যানেলিস্ট হিসেবে যুক্ত হয়েছেন আমাদের বিডি ফিজিশিয়ানসে অত্যন্ত পরিচিত এবং সবসময় আমাদেরকে যিনি লাইফ পার্টনার হিসেবে রাখেন প্রফেসর খোরশেদ আলম মজুমদার প্রফেসর অ্যান্ড হেড ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ ইএনটি হলি ফ্যামিলি রেড ক্রেসেন্ট মেডিকেল কলেজ এবং সবচেয়ে বড় কথা কোভিড পিরিয়ডে স্যার একজন নিবেদিত প্রাণ কোভিড যোদ্ধা হিসাবে ডিরেক্টর হলি ফ্যামিলি রেড ক্রেসেন্ট মেডিকেল কলেজ হসপিটালে কাজ করছেন একই সঙ্গে স্যার ট্রেজারার ইএনটি সোসাইটি বাংলাদেশ এবং প্রেসিডেন্ট সোসাইটি অফ সার্জন ফর স্লিপ অ্যাপনিয়া অ্যাসোসিয়েশন অফ বাংলাদেশ আমাদের মাঝে আজকে প্রথমবারের মতো জয়েন করেছেন আমরা স্যারকে অন্তর অন্তস্থল থেকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি প্রফেসর ডাক্তার শেখ হাসানুর রহমান স্যার প্রফেসর ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ ইএনটি অ্যান্ড হেড নেক সার্জারি বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিব মেডিকেল ইউনিভার্সিটি আমি আর কথা না বাড়িয়ে আমাদের সেশনটি শুরু করার জন্য বিনীতভাবে অনুরোধ জানাচ্ছি আমাদের আজকের স্পিকার প্রফেসর কামরুল হাসান তরফদার স্যারকে In the name of Allah, most gracious and merciful. Our topic is phonosurgery. Phonosurgery means surgery for bias. Our mainly actually why we are interested on phonosurgery. Voice is an important thing, which is very important for livelihood thing, for anyone. So now in COVID period, a lot of patients are suffering from respiratory disorder and they have to go for intubation, tracheostomy, and so many things. So I don't know whether two or three years after what will be the end result of this sort of intubation and tracheostomy. So actually, fun surgery means working on the voice, mainly for the improvement and restoration of the voice. First adopted by the Hans von Leiden. Mainly, it is of two types, primary and secondary. Primary is mainly for the restoration of the voice, which, what, which is present or improvement of the voice. A lot of the patients are the professional voice users, mainly the singer, hawker, teacher, renter, politicians who live their lives by making the voice. So there is a chance of voice changes. So primarily phonosurgery, it depends on improvement of voice and secondarily maintenance of the vocal function. So primarily is restricted to the phonosurgery. Secondary, there are so many things, epithelial lesions of the lady, so we work on that. It may change the voice. So somebody should be very careful when you work on the epithelial lesions of the lady. Then finally, we may work on the vocal cord, even the side by structure, even the anything operating on the uh, throat, especially parents are asking whether the after tonsillectomy, after adenoidectomy, there is some change of voice. After nasal surgery, some change of voice. So they're worried. 
the, whether the surgery can change the voice. According to the classification, mainly um, microsurgery, now it is the important thing. What we do for the change of the voices, vocal fold surgery, the vocal cord, then laryngeal framework surgery. You know the anatomy of the larynx in that case. So anatomy, physiology, and neuromuscular changes may cause change of the voice. So finally, we talk in vocal cord surgery and epithelial lesion, how the phonosurgery comes. So actually, laryngeal surgery comes from mirror to laser. Primarily, larynx was not visualized. In 19th century, Bosini first reported, again, the sunlight, he used a mirror and see the vocal cord, high vocal cord is move, moving. Now it comes up to the laser, endoscope and others, how the things come in. Then finally, after the introduction of good anesthesia, people can see the ladings under direct endoscopy. And Karsten induced the concept of directly in 1895. Primarily, the endoscopy was done in sitting to supine position, then the uh, changes occur. Bruning is one of the important person who uses the injection for the lading. Bill Roth from Vienna, he did the first lading activity in 1974. Finally, Goldsenberg with the first use of artificial lading for voice restoration. Just one month back, you have seen the total tracheal transplant is going mm, done in uh, Mount Sinai Hospital, New York. So we are grateful to the Jacob from Boston. He introduced the laser coupled to the operating microscope. First application of laser, CO2 laser done in the Boston Messers Hospital. Nowadays, people's examination of the ladings is very important. Previously, we examined the lading with simple mirror, it is very important. Indirect endoscopy, fantastically, you can see the vocal cord, its movement, and other area. Now, uh, the development of fiber laryngoscopy, the video laryngoscopy, now for the evolution of the voice, stroboscope has come. Stroboscope has a tremendous development because vocal cord moves more than 100 cycles per second by video laryngoscope, by uh, fiber laryngoscope. Only human eye perceive the five uh, cycles per second, the human retina can perceive, but vocal fold per second, it moves, the, moves more than 100 seconds. By video stroboscope, we can count the all movement of the vocal cord, its velocity, its amplitude, and other areas. So thorough assessment is essential in a voice disorder patient, of which the history is very important. History, is there any history, congenital or development, or in which profession is working, either as a professional voice user or any surgery, history of any surgery or any disease. So there is the element, elementary diagnostic procedure, clinical diagnostic aid, instrumental measures. So phono surgery is defined as any surgery designed primarily for the improvement or restoration of the voice. So uh, it is now people's so uh, video endosc endoscopy, endoscopy, it can be done, but better it should be done in the micro surgery. After the development of carbon dioxide laser and micro manipulator, microscope, of course, the phono surgery includes the micro surgery, vocal cord injection, laryngeal femoral surgery, nerve grafting, neuromuscular surgery. Why the microscope is important? Because binocular vision, magnification, better illumination, an ability used by bimanual instrumentation, the ability to use the carbon dioxide laser, the CO2 laser with micro manipulator, surgeon can use the both hands by um, through this. Before doing this, somebody should know about the laryngeal musculature. And important is that the vocal cord has got two important functions, adduction and abduction. Adduction is by the posterior recurrent line, which is supplied by the recurrent engine now. And adductors, are uh, other uh, nerves are on, all, only important. So abductor is by the superior laryngeal nerve. The external laryngeal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve is important and adduction or tension in by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So the 
before doing this, Lenin's and Nafsab is important. Generally, in our country, we have seen a lot of patients have got vocal cord palsy, both in the uh, unilateral and bilateral side, and especially after surgery, especially of the, after the thyroid surgery, other surgery, esophageal surgery, laryngeal surgery, medicinal surgery, any cancer surgery can cause the uh, paralysis. But very important, when there is a recurrent laryngeal palsy, that is a, the vocal cords in one side in the paramedium position. When there is a bilateral palsy, it is in the more or less in the midline. When there is a abductor palsy, when the both recurrent laryngeal and superior laryngeal is paralyzed. So somebody should know about the uh, anatomy of this area. So before the thyroid surgery, why it is important? Um, there will be future session for thyroid surgery. One should know about the PR strangle and John strangle, where the superior laryngeal nerve, where the recurrent laryngeal nerve, what is the relation to the superior thyroid vessel, what is the relation with the inferior thyroid vessel, which is very important during surgery. Nowadays, the litigation for the nerve injury is more in developed here. So they are using the nerve monitor, nerve pressure, and other video monitoring or neuro monitor. Now it is important. We are not using neuro monitor, but in developed world. The robots is also come with the old neuro monitor. They have called the neuro monitor hand, the harmonic scalpel, not pressure, not monitor. So why this is important? If the recurrent laryngeal palsy, that is in lateral vocal cord palsy. If there is superior laryngeal, that is abductor palsy. The patient paralyzes as well as the aspiration. Both important. Immediately after, after surgery, the patient complained of cough. Until probed otherwise, it is a superior laryngeal palsy. Immediately after proper operation, if there is a stridor, this is a recurrent laryngeal. So somebody should be very important. Why the vocal food injection is important? So Bruning first described the injections of vocal food. He injected paraffin by the light, direct endoscopy. Later, it was popularized by Teflon. Nowadays, now we have started in our area, and it is done both on the local and general anesthesia. Why? Immediately after surgery, after especially thyroid surgery, after intubation, anesthetic look for the way the vocal cords is moving or not. If there is a, the vocal cords are moving, everybody is fine. If there, there is a one vocal cord is not moving, there is a chance of vocal cord palsy. So somebody should think about it. So the surgeon, Nowadays, there should be marked during they isolate the recurrent laryngeal nerve, they isolate the inferior thyroid artery, the isolation of the parathyroid, isolation of the superior thyroid. There are some tidbits in this area. So better in superior thyroid only ligate the superior thyroid artery. If you ligate in a clamp, there is a clamp of the external laryngeal nerve, even in the both external and internal may be, may be caught and they in the clamp. During uh, inferior thyroid artery ligation, it's better close to the vessels. Even somebody should identify the recurrent laryngeal nerve because it may go above the inferior thyroid, below or in between. So it is better to uh, cauterize or ligate close to the gland first to identify the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Even the blood supply of the parathyroid is also through the same inferior thyroid artery. So branch posterior branch only ligated. So there should not be geopardize of the parathyroids. Otherwise, there will be parathyroid insufficiency. There will be hypokalemic syndrome, others. So this is very, very important. So uh, somebody if thinking on the phono surgery, he should be master on the working on the vocal cord simply by the injecting procedure. So there's so many disease in the area, especially generally after thyroid palsy, Somebody says we are waiting, waiting for six months, but there is this spontaneous regeneration of the nerve or not. Then there'll be voice of the old bite. But the temporary procedure, vocal full injection, it's only fat. And previously, so many things were used nowadays. They also get calcium hydroxyapatite and teflon, collagen, other things are used. So in that area, if you immediately inject, it can be done under local anesthesia with a vision. So there's a mutilation of the vocal cord, voice will move, especially of the cancer surgery. Deliberately somewhere injuring, uh, relaying the, some of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. In that case also, vocal cord injection can be done. 
um, so prevent aspiration and other. In old ages, when there is a vocal cord atrophy, adjuvant augmentation prior to surgery, the vocal cord injection can be done. Ideal injection material, is, which is readily available, inexpensive, inert, easy to use, completely biocompatible. So previously, gel form was used, then carboxymethyl cellulose, bovine collagen, human derived collagen, micronate eldorzolum, hyaluronic acid gel, calcium hydroxypitate, teflon, autologous fat. So teflon injection previously done, but nowadays, as it is irreversible, there is a vocal stiffness and chance of granular formation. So the people are avoiding this. Calcium hydroxyapatite, yes, still it is FDA approved. And so many things are they are using. But we prefer autologous fat, which is harvested more commonly from lower abdomen, inner thigh. And um, from the own tissue, it is a time morbidity fraud. It can be done generally under general anesthesia. It can be done even under local anesthesia. So as now in our setup in vocal cord injection, especially in a spasmodic dysphonia patient, I've seen last, last week, uh, Professor Babur and his team that injected more than 29 patients with Botox. And this is under local anesthesia, beautifully in uh, the spasmodic dysphonia under local anesthesia, uh, you can inject the botox both in the uh, single and both vocal cord. Generally, a vocal cord injection, it can be done under local anesthesia. It is not a difficult because if some of the, the proper laryngoscope, endoscope, nowadays fiber optic laryngoscope is uh, uh, available in every setup. So in all setups, so if the someone got the idea about the video laryngoscopy, Beautifully, the laryngeal gargle procedure. There is a space for that. If somebody knows, they can use it. Or if the gargle facility is nowhere available, they, they can use the local injection, one in one, 1000 adrenaline injection, two or three cc by the glycothyroid junction. And the bronchoscopy is done in this way. So, teflon injection, fat injection, glycerin injection, collagen injection. Somebody used previously glycerin, silicone injection, laryngeal, then by injection technique, it can be done the percutaneously, can be performed under sedation or all a visualization of the flexible fibroscope. In the lower system, you can see how the video angoscopy, one can see the condition of the laryngeal, condition of the vocal cord, and externally, the injection, how it is introduced. For optimum results, needle place just anterior and lateral to vocal process on a plain level with a lower border of the medial edge. Somebody can uh, use the injection by transthalingeal, by uh, cricothyroid puncture, by thyroid membrane puncture, usually not done routinely, danger of injection. But somebody should be uh, very cautious during giving injection. It should not be too much. It should not be too less. Even uh, the thing which are injecting that is important. Patients who do not tolerate flexible fiber of examination during a ablative procedure where recurrent engine or vagus nerve resection is anticipated, generally done, uh, position is supine, anesthesia is GRLA. Instruments already have told them, simple zero to 30 degree telescope, digital video system, and 23 gauge needle. Or if the bruning sequence is available, it is special needle, by use we can use the injection. Avoid unnecessary tension at the entry commission. Superior laryngeal nerve block should be avoided as it alters the vocal cord tension by paralyzing tricothyroid muscle. Appropriate amount of overcorrection used for most injected to 50-30% is better, not too much overcorrected. If too much overcorrected and the injection is go to the dentary space, there will be some sort of distress. So injection with the superficial lamina propria is avoided and chance of granulation from tissue formation is more in that, in that case. Avoid unnecessary tension at the entry commission. Complication of vocal cord injection, under injection, requiring repeat procedure. It is good for the newcomers, not giving too much. Over injection, incise mucosa, remove excess material suction, compressor laser or cup forces, removal of thyrotomy. So during injection procedure, after giving the fat or anything there, generally we prefer to keep the needle in that area at least for minimum 60 seconds. 
If you remove the uh, needle immediately, there are chance, some chance of extrusion of that. So um, somebody prefer some sort of over injection than extrusion of some. Now we are talking of the laryngeal framework surgery. There are so many things, uh, even given injection in just I'm giving you in touch about the phono surgery. Here in 1915, first described the medialized paralyzed vocal cord by inward display over length thyroid and cartilage well. Ishiki is from Japan. 19th first described the four types of thyroplasty. Uh, one of our panelists, Kushi Mojumdar, is here. We have got an experience in Japan. We have gone to attend a no, so in Seoul. In the phonosurgery conference, we are we are presenting one of the thyroplasty, and in that room, the Ishiki was present. Now, the mutilation thyroplasty is by the name of uh, that is Ishiki thyroplasty, type 1 thyroplasty. There are so many types of thyroplasty, approximation thyroplasty type 1, lateral relation thyroplasty type 2A, medial approach, midline lateral thyroplasty type 2B, vocal cord abduction by suture technique or resection technique, shortening thyroplasty type 3, and tensioning elongation thyroplasty type 4A. Type 1, as you know, when we are doing type 1 thyroplasty, indication when there is a glatic insufficiency, especially when there is a unilateral vocal cord palsy by surgery, say thyroid surgery or esophageal surgery or medicinal surgery. After the surgery, there is a unilateral vocal cord palsy. And um, in a cancer, there is a, some sort of aspiration, dystonia in unilateral vocal cord palsy or in old age, there may be vocal cord atrophy. There may be bowing of the vocal cord. There may be sulcus vocalis, soft tissue defect region from excision of the pathological masses. In that case, type 1 thyroplasty is indicated. Generally, people are thinking malignant disease, our length tractor was a, was a contraindication. But nowadays, if there is a one sided there is a, with the aspiration, yen, even cancer surgery, the uh, thyropla, type 1 thyroplasty may be done. But the result is poor in, if there is a, some sort of atrophy due to the following radiation in the surgery. Uh, this is uh, the site about the thyroid cartilage. There is a superior corno, inferior corno, through the superior corno, superior line, through the inferior corno, inferior line, and during the midline, quite the area where the both vocal cord is inserted. So, what is the thing you will do in the uh, thyroplasty type 1? Type 1 thyroplasty by manual uh, manipulation, by we can see previous surgery, how the voice can be improved. So, in that way, this is the indication thyroplasty. If a paralyzed atrophy vocal cord medial of the thyroid muscle contraction is inadequate, thyroplasty implant medializes the membranes of vocal cord to mimic the activity of the thyroid mouth. Actually, goal is to improve the voice quality and to prevent aspiration. Surgery done under local anesthesia, generally with 1% liglocin. A pyramidian horizontal incision is given. Thyroid cartilage is exposed. Sternothyroid is elevated. And in one side, right or left side, the paralyzed area will do for the incision. What to do? Halfway between the thyroid notch and the inferior border of the thyroid cartilage, parallel to the inferior border. Thing is that somebody should take an incision in the inferior border. It should be better three millimeter above. There is a otherwise there is a chance of the thyroid cartilage broken or uh, breaking or fracture. So from the anterior border, it should be about five to seven millimeter posterior to the midline in female, eight to ten millimeter male. And for the posterior border, it is just in front of the anterior to the oblique line. Inferior border, it is better two, three millimeters superior to the inferior border. Otherwise, chancing of fracturing is done. This is a marking how you can do it. It's very difficult in calcified thing. Sometimes you have to know not the seizure, you know, some of the drill machine may be, may be used. Nowadays, so many implants are available. Montegomery, titanium, calderithosan, hand-carved silicone, Gore-Tex. So without 
making from the other then this can be originally used pontocuban thyroplasty implant is important not too much costly is within 50 to 100 dollar set window size for men and women five implant size for each window and use accordingly which can give you the good voice eliminates need to hand fashion implants self treating implant no such an necessary due to stroma and surgery time reversible now the titanium medullation implant is available how the titanium is placed gortex you also available in our country yes by the cortex you can improve the vocal cord function silicon blocks are also available silicon blocks uh, this is it did, can be removed if the work is no not too much good these are the some of the calcium hydroxy ready is now in, uh, available available in all over the even in, in our country sometimes our after thyroplasty the voice is not good maybe do the posterior record erythroid area gap is there in that case the posterior erythroid adduction may be done so thyroplasty generally done on a long term anesthesia position is more anatomic disadvantage it is open procedure technically is a bit difficult closure of the posterior glottis may be limited factors attaining the output of surgery already you have told it depends on size and shape of the implant and position of the patient maintaining proper position of the implant so it needs mastering complication yes there is a chance of bone infection there is a chance of penetration in the endothelial mucosa nowadays people say no it is not in complication there may be some injury to endothelial mucosa but voice is not hampered there is a chance of chondritis there is a chance of ear obstruction there is a chance of implant extrusion if the wind is too high if the implant is too big or too small in that as a proper size of the uh, medullation th thyroplasty is important closure of the posterior glottis is limited in medullation thyroplasty no effect on vocal fold level in vertical plane management yes revision thyroplasty can be done and vocal fold injection with camera can be done with otol voice plug now there are the procedures of erythroid adduction somebody do and somebody think of the reinnervation procedure modified technique done by nishima and college 1999 erythroid adduction as already told addresses posterior glottic gap by putting erythroid in erected position if thyroplasty is not enough in the vocal cord palsy how the posterior stitching is done shown in this area so which are placed to required cartilage simulate section of the lateral pericardium now the details modification uh, is erythroid pex thyroplasty type 2 the vocal folds are displaced laterally away from the midline mainly it is used from the adductor spasmodic dystonia but botox injection is not the important but it works uh, uh 3 to 6 month when some patients are very much toxic or reactive to botox in that case is spasmodic dystonia thyroplasty type 2 is tried in india and other area lateralization thyroplasty lateral approach two paramedian vertical incision in interface the anterior segment of the the lateral segment how the lateralization is done medial approach optimal growth curve in adjust and readjusted vocal cord abduction by suturation method adenoidopexy resection method adenoidectomy one when we will go for the some woodman procedure is a lateral neck incision by external incision we will do now we are thinking of the cordectomy if the patient come with the bilateral palsy people previous thinking of cordectomy posterior cordectomy now it is not in done now the cordectomy is done uh, mainly for the carcinoma early uh, glottic carcinoma kashima in 1989 partial posterior cordectomy by kamrasela jar excising a c shape wedge from the posterior vocal cord in the inlet in a bilateral vocal cord palsy if this procedure opening is not adequate after 6 to 8 weeks procedure can be replaced a small cordectomy can be performed on the other vocal cord but in our practice we have seen we are if you using some of the diode laser there is some of the granulation tissue 
if not using the luminous pleasure, other terminals, the chance of granulation is more. So uh, repeated operation can be done for removal of the granulation tissue and uh, in partially taking some of the adenoid, which can give the good answer in a bilateral vocal cord palsy. Relief of the area of obstruction with preservation of the vocal cavity. So people are thinking because we have seen a lot of patients coming with a tracheostomy in situ, the life becoming hell. So after introduction of the, this carbon dioxide laser, phono surgery, and the laser Kashima procedure, now uh, um, our group has got vast experience. They are doing the Kashima procedure, posterior cordectomy, eritonectomy in one side, and it gives the good ear wear. Even voice is also good. After, immediately after operation two to three months, the voice is not good, but generally it recurs. After five to six months, almost uh, that was a nice voice. Cordectomy, there is a six type of cordectomy. Type one, subepithelial cordectomy. Type two, subligamental cordectomy. Type three, transmuscular cordectomy. Type four, total cordectomy. Five A, extended cordectomy, encompassing the controlled vocal cord. Five B, extended cordectomy with erythroids. Type five C, extended cordectomy with ventricular fold. Five D, extended cordectomy, encompassing up to the subglottis. So you are seeing right posterior cordectomy in case of bilateral abductor paralysis. Type 3 thyroplasty, thyroid ally incised, a junction of the anterior middle one third, 2500 cartilage T is excised. Anterior comes to detraction, middle portion of the cartilage, how post. Here, one of the panelists, Sheikh Hassan Rahman, he has got experience, good experience, especially in the pubertonia patient. In that case, it's thyroplasty, how they increase the pitch and voice. Increases the uh, type 4 thyroplasty, increases the distance between the vocal cord attachment and the size the tension of the vocal cord in androphonia. Abnormally low pitch voice in female, male to female transsexualization, and abnormally lax bowed vocal cord as in press biophonia. We have got experience on press biophonia by doing the type 4 thyroplasty. Trichothyroid ap approximation, we are not doing this, but it can be done. Trichothyroid subluxation to lengthen the vocal cord by increasing the distance from the cricothyroid joint to the anterior commissure, results in really rotation to the anterior commissure airway because the phonosurgery arena is very new in our country. Previously, we are doing only tracheostomy in the bilateral vocal cord to pulse sign. It was the only answer, but the tracheostomy has got a lot of complication. There is a, always the patient have to put a tracheostomy, especially for the child if in a multiple papilloma patient we have seen a lot of patients with the tracheostomy when the patient want to go to the school with a tracheostomy to voice is hampered, so school life is hard, quality of life later. So now after coming of the this sort of operation, especially the Kashima and lateralization procedure, we can withdraw the tracheostomy and the tracheostomy hazard. So in a bilateral policy, still a lot of patient in our country comes uh, with a bilateral pulse after thyroid surgery. In that case, our advice is prevention is better than cure. It is, you should not master on the patient. You should know about the total anatomy of the thyroid, total surgical anatomy of the thyroid, surgical principle of the brain. It is not the principle to remove the whole thyroid. It is not the principle to remove the, uh, go for the semedial <coughs> and lateral uh, the resection of the uh, limb nodes, medial midline clearance and lateral clearance. It is important. Why is the retinal angel nerve? Why is the inferior thyroid artery? Why is the parathyroid? Why is the superior thyroid nerve? So somebody should mastering on the both anatomy, surgical anatomy, and the surgical expertise, and the facility. In newer world, the facility, there is nerve monitor, nerve pressure, harmonic pulse neurotransmitter, robotic. Yes, Bangladesh, this should become. These are not the facilities. This is a surgeon. This is a competent which can improve the surgery. So we are mainly the phono surgery. So we are talking of the improvement and restoration of the voice, which is very important, especially the voice worker. Mainly the uh, singer, teacher. If uh, someone do the voice performer, they like their lives, with the voice. 
So somebody should think twice to maintain and restore the voice. So nowadays, the laryngeal denervation surgeries are available. Though it is start from 1909, yes, during surgery, especially thyroid and the, any laryngeal surgery, if surgeon should know where they can laryngeal nerve, but still, even malignancy, if the recurrent laryngeal is involved with the thyroid tissue, sometimes you should sacrifice. You may need to sacrifice the recurrent laryngeal nerve with thyroid tissue. If deep cases the hawker sacrificing, in that case, you need not need to be an appropriate finishing procedure. Immediately, with the great auricular nerve take or great shepherdness nerve, somebody under microscope do it. Or if after operation, immediately after surgery, the anesthetist is saying the vocal cord is move, not moving. So surgeon was not sure whether he injured or cauterized the recurrent kind of nerve. In that case, it's better now in the developed area, even in our country, re anesthetize the patient, open the hole, you find out the recurrent kind of nerve, whether it is in a position, it may be accidentally caught in ligature, so ligature should be removed. If you can see there is a both ends of the uh, recurrent of some trauma, end to end anastomosis by non zero filament or place it. But if the patient comes uh, after surgery, there may be neuropraxia or neuropathy, the patient may come down. In that case, it's what we already told. If the patient comes with a, you say, in a voice disorder or voice personal with a recurrent palsy, they can use temporarily fat injection in that patient. Within six months, no need of wait for six months. Within one month or within 15 days, if there is a voice changes, you can use the fat injection. No matter if there is neuropathy, it will come back and come back again. Neuromuscular pedicle, technique attempts to transfer a nerve with a portion of its motor unit, intact denervated muscle, small box of muscle at distal into the donor nerve included. Successful result depends the ability of transplanted axons to reach the receptive sites on recipient muscle, ability of the muscle fiber to accept nerves. Principle, muscle reinnervation or immediate reinnervation, you may need to get the voice, but voice quality obviously improved, obviously improved. So reinnervation, now people are thinking that done when palsy persists six months to one year, trichoidner joint fixation present, vocal cord palsy, or central nervous joint, laryngoscopy with palpation of the retinoid, whether there is fixation of the retinoid or not, horizontal skin incision, find out where the answer cervical is, tracing, find out the recurrent laryngeal nerve up to the proximal and distally, appropriate branch recognized, mobilizing the video board of the amoeboid near the attachment higher bone. If nerve is injured, branch of the stern or thyroid is also acceptable. So laryngoscopy harvesting neuromuscular same. Failure to obtain certified result, own infection, there is a chance. Indicate an unilateral vocal cord palsy, advantage relatively easy to perform. So now the, we, are, we want to develop our phonosurgery groups. They should know. So this is not a difficult surgery. So how to re the lungs, re the possible, answer cervicalis, one of the important things. Somebody says the phrenic nerve may be used. So requires deeper neck dissection, lengthy procedure, eliminates possible spontaneous recovery, delay for five to six, nine months before substantial important voice, requires one intact answer cervicalis and intact distal lump stump of the recurrent nerve. So you should find out the distal lump or recurrent nerve. Answer cervicalis should be intact. During surgery, especially neck dissection, some should be kosher, then is better to make intaction. Ability of the distal stump prerequisite, ability to the donor nerve, patient must be able to tolerate GA, patient must be ready to wait for substantial improvement from re Yes, bloatic area compromise in bilateral palsy, life activity is the more, presence of scar, yes, if the patient with the cancer, life is less, no need of doing this. 
So vocal cord surgery was traditionally performed in BSME with cold microinstrument with the help of a biotin microscope. Then 2009, we are equipped with the diode laser. From 2010, we are equipped with the terminal cell laser. So we have got experience or doing the lot of vocal cord nodule, vocal cord polyp, recurrent respiratory papillomatis, vocal cord cyst, Renkis edema, leukoplakia, bilateral abductor palsy, glottic cancer, subglottic stenosis. So in vocal cord nodule, if it is a soft nodule, no need of surgery. Speech steroids are enough. Nowadays, you are our people uh, giving the steroid. And even by local anesthesia, we will give the small dose of steroid in that area. If there is a hard nodule, not recur of the speech therapy, in that case, they may need surgery, either by cold steel technique or laser. Vocal cord polyp, yes, again, it can be done by single cold steel method, by laser, by micro debriter. So, so many things are available. After coming the CO2 laser, especially luminous laser, it's a good. In some of the vocal cord polyp and the reddish one, in that case, if there is vascularity, with a common laser, we will give some of the spot on the red uh, blood circulation area, so there is chance of recurrence will be less. We are getting a lot of recurrent respiratory papillomatosis. Still, it is a nightmare for the ENT specialist. We we have got a lot of childs with the recurrent respiratory papillomatosis. We have got it have got very good association with the human papilloma virus in the India in Sri Lanka. Now the all male or females are vaccinated with the human papilloma virus. Bangladesh, it will start. So mainly recurrent papilloma virus and some of the oral cancer or the, uh, the papilloma virus is important. So generally, recurrent respiratory papillomatosis. It can start from the upper area of the uh, laryngeal tract, vocal fold, subglottis area, trachea, lading, go above. So it is very difficult. It may involve the glottis both sides. So very difficult to remove. So uh, previously we are doing tracheostomy doing the answer. Now we are talking, don't do tracheostomy in this child. You refer the patient to the proper center. So the removal should be done under general anesthesia. If the commodicial laser is available with laser, if the KTP laser is with KTP laser, now the micro debrider with some of the streamer blades are available. Beautifully you can remove the, remove the all the uh, multiple papilloma virus but it's better staging the surgery in that question, not do 100% in a one session. If the anterior commissure is involved, somebody should not injure the anterior commissure. If the anterior commissure is involved, the chance of sinic air formation. And so somebody is take time before doing the surgery. Yes, staging can be done. Vocal cord cyst by giving mini incision, removal of the uh, ting area, laser can be done, rent is getting, yeah? Others, we can see it is a smoker sledding. Generally, dentist media occurs in a smoker. You advise the patient don't smoke. Then you see some of the reaction, but still there is a, some fluid accumulation in the space. In that case, you can give some of the incision, removal of the gelatinous fluid, laser can be used. So chances are good, but there should be no smoker. Lycoplakia is very important in that case whether leukoplakia or carcinoma in situ, somebody think twice. Now we have got the fiber laryngoscope with NBI. So narrow band imaging in case of early lesion can detect by vascular changes, whether malignancy or not. So in leukoplakia, remove this area, even taking tissue from the area for histopathology, there may be carcinoma in situ. Posterior cordectomy, cordotomy, erythronectomy for bilateral palsy. Now we have got more than 50 experience, but we're thinking it's not a good experience. Cordectomy for T1 glatic cancer, very good answer. The TLM, transoral laser laryngeal microsurgery. is a very good technique, especially T1A and T1B glottic cancer. So with T1 glottic cancer by carbon dioxide, it is a curative treatment. Otherwise, Radiotherapy, namely IMRT, intensity modular radiotherapy, which is costly, which is chance of future, chance of recurrence, future carcinoma change. By cordectomy, it is curative. Even it triggers, you have got the salvage treatment for both total laryngectomy and radiotherapy. Nowadays, we are very much cautious about the subglottic stenosis and tracheal stenosis because 
in the COVID area, a lot of patients are fractures to mass. So, and in the ICU, the inadvertent is the intubation and other tubes. There is some form of stenosis. And in that case, it's very difficult to treat. There may be glottic stenosis, there may be subglottic stenosis, there may be supraglottic stenosis, there may be tracheal stenosis. So it is a really, really difficult. Previously, we are doing the stenosis with living official. We have got experience. I recollect my mentor, Professor Alauddin. At that period, uh, once me and Kurshad Mojumdar gone to the Pune Center, we have seen and we have told our expert in the session, you, we are doing laying of fissure and excise the tissue and using the T tube or we, at that time we were using the endotracheal tubes properly sized. But nowadays, after coming from both diode and carbon dioxide laser, so stenostasia can by incise both anterior posterior and lateral reaction, use the T tube, a lot of patient in future, somebody will show you the, how the T tube works in the subglottic stenosis and in a glottic stenosis. So nowadays, these are the surgery. Patients should be followed up till this month. Patients with vocal cord nodule, polyp, renkis, edema, cyst, and granuloma have no recurrence. Good boys. Yes, some may be recurrent in a vocal cord nodule. Vocal cord nodule, the pathology is not removed. It is due to abuse or misuse of boys. In the Rentkis edema, this is the smoking procedure. So this should be avoided. Somebody should avoid the all aces. There should be good speech. They should avoid smoking, spirit, spicy food, and the shouting and others. They should, someone should take eight to 10 glass of normal water in a day. So, uh, so you should be thin. Yes, the patients with multiple people more on recurrence. Our appeal to the government and other areas, especially the different societies, the people should be vaccinated with the human papilloma vaccine. So a lot of cancer and this question we, we can remove from our society. I've seen in Sri Lanka last two years back, they're vaccinated with the human papilloma vaccine and they are the multiple papilloma lanes almost nil. We have got subglottic stenosis, some of the patient with the even esophageal stenosis just three days back Three days now, three months, three weeks back, we got a child of six years. He has taken, uh, after injection of battery, he has got subglottic stenosis and esophageal stenosis. And recently, the patient has got trachea to me. Now he is waiting with us what to do next. One patient died in post operative due to anesthetic complication because jet ventilation is important. Due to jet ventilation, even chance of pneumothorax in one patient, in our patient has got pneumothorax even when we have to use in that area. This is some of the vocal cord nodule. This is the vocal cord polyp. Vocal cord polyp. Very nice. If someone is the cold stream stacking, injecting either uh, the normal cell or even those 0 0.05 cc local uh, steroid in that area, swelling of the, the epithelium, because one should, one should obey one rule. This is a, what is that? He should respect the vocal cord epithelium. Vocal cord epithelium has got home. This is a multiple papillomal leading. In the posterior area, this is until pro the other, it is a vocal cord granuloma. Again, there is a vocal cord cyst. It's better give an incision by superior flap, remove the things from the deeper radius. So what I told, respect the vocal cord epithelium. Epithelium, there is superficial layer, intermediate layer, and deep layer. So only you can injure the lamina preparia. Then the chance of healing by four, four weeks. There is in vocal cord, there is a lateral surface, superior surface, inferior surface. So it is better to injure one surface. The healing is more. If you injure the two surfaces, it takes at least one month. If you injure the both surfaces, it takes two months. If there is injury to the vocalis muscle and vocal ligament, obviously there will be fibrosis. So epithelial injury should be the minimum. They should not injure the vocal ligament. Should not injure the vocal ligament. So main thing is final surgery, especially working on the vocal cord, should not injure the deeper structure. 
So we are talking that in epithelial lesion, you should not just pull the um, clear with the instrument and pull it, cut it. There is a chance of instrument. At least cold skid in the steel batter technique by hydro dissection, by local steroid and net, you pull it laterally, use a proper type scissor, cut it, the chance of injury to the deep tear will well. So voice will be very much optimum and good in that case. So in a phono surgery, someone should be very cautious and respect the vocal cord. In nodule, yes, soft nodules are managed by speech and language therapy, which hard nodules are managed by surgery speech therapy. Surging when you involves grasping the center of the nodule, pulling it medially, then using micro scissor or cut with the cochlear close to the base, or you can use the uh, CO2 laser. Both sides can be done simultaneously because simultaneously is not done if you should not injure the anterior commissure. Polyps, yes. Surgical removal, appropriate preservation of the mucosa is essential to little resulting reformation of the polyp, too much in scanning of the focal fold. Renke sedima, what I told before, the making a chordotomy incision on the superior aspect of the focal fold, preserving the medial vibrating edge, elevation of the mucosa and expiration or removal of the maximator's content. Flap is laid onto the surface, led to heal by surface tension. Papillomatosis, already I told. My papillomas are excised using either CO2 laser or microdebrator. Single papilloma re excised at the base. Multiple papilloma excision facilitated by submucal injection of saline. Further studies required to address best treatment, adjuvant treatments, including retinoids, alpha interferon, rebavirin, cyclooxygen 2 inhibitor, sedoberid, but these are more recognized in the USA and then the UK. So, what is the keynote? Injectable material include Teflon, fat, glycerin, collagen, and silicon. All provide immediate results. All can ideally be carried out under local anesthesia in the normal anatomical position with the patient sitting up in injecting through the trichothyroid membrane to improve the most reliable voice outcome because it immediately under local anesthesia is done. These products demonstrate range of reversibility with glycerin. Now we are avoiding, we are avoiding Teflon. All except collagen are straightforward to inject. All carry the potential complication to over-injection, airway compromise, under-injection, but silicon carries the additional risk of misplacement of migration, while a Teflon, in addition to later to also has the risk of granular formation. Cost is not a major issue in deciding which is to use. We are using thinking for the fat. The underlying etiology of the focal abnormality must be established and addressed before surgery. This is important. Which profession is working? Which thing are you using? Whether you use... Uh, addicted to alcohol or smoker. Complete assessment of video stroboscopy and quantity measurement pre and post surgery desirable. So video stroboscopy is very important, what I told before. Knowledge of the anatomy and microstructure of the focal cord, location is essential. Danger framework surgery should be performed on a long run step for auditory feedback. And generally, type 1 thyroplasty is done under local anesthesia. Thank you all.